Okay, good evening again. So we will start computer edit geometric design today. I will start with the, what we call this kinds of curve. That is the interpolation curve. Um, I would like to um, recall you a bit about what we have done or what we have studied before, right? We have studied uh, many kinds of curves, right? But um, they are in the same kind. That is the um, approximation curve. What does it mean by approximation curve? When you have uh, a set of control points, and then if you use the Bernstein polynomial, you can get a curve that we can call a Bayesian curve, right? According to the set of or control points, right? But the point has to pass through the first and the last end point only. Okay, so what um, we can call that kind of curve that is oh, sorry, I didn't remove this. <laughs> okay, Bayesian curve. And we have already studied about Bayesian curve, side ball curve, Wang ball curve, right? These are we, what do you call approximate approximate curve. Why do we call this? The reason that, that we, we call this as an approximate curve, because if you define the control point, for this example, this is a cubic ball curve, a cubic curve, right? But we don't know yet it is Bayesian or side ball or one ball, right? If we design this one, this uh, control point, if we um, apply Bernstein polynomial to this control point, you can get what we call Bayesian curve. Okay, Bayesian curve. Mm -hmm. And if you apply side ball curve, side ball polynomial, you can get what's happened? We can get side ball curve like this. And you if you apply Wang polynomial, you can get Wang ball curve. Okay, according to the control point. Okay, but this curve is just an approximate curve according to the control point. Yeah, because it passed only the first and the last endpoint. The first and the last endpoint. So this we call approximate curve or approximation curve. But today I'm going to introduce you two new curves, right? This is some um, maybe someone maybe someone knows about this this the name, like uh Newton. So I said Newton. Ah, okay. This is the, the name, the, the, sir, the family name of the Sir Isaac Newton. That's already um he invented um what we call Newton different forward, uh forward different something, right? That um he has a he had an idea that he would like to join um for, for example, if you have four control point like this, four point like this, one two, three, four. Newton wants to find a curve that can pass through uh, this point or uh, this control point. Okay. He tried to do that in the past. Mm -hmm. So this kind of curve you can call interpolation curve. And this interpolation curve we will talk today will be called Newton and Lagrange curve. 
Okay, sometimes we call Lagrange, but as it it was written, but actually it is a French name, so we can we have to call it Lagrange. Okay, so these two kinds of curve, they are interpolation curve. What does it mean by interpolation curve? Right? If we have a list of or a sequence of control points, right? I have to say a list because it has to be start from one, two, three, four, the sequence is important. So you can get the curve that can pass through all of the sequence of points. Okay, this we can call it interpolation curve. And there are two kinds of interpolation curve uh, up to, uh, right now. I'm going to introduce you just two kinds, Newton and Lagrange curve. Okay, then we go to the definition of Newton curve or Newton, Newton polynomial. If we have Newton polynomial in, okay, actually it has been divided in, into the form that is quite, um, how can I say, that is complicated. Right, because it has to pass through n plus one control point, right, n plus one control point, right? And point is C. And point C, I can be written in terms of F, I, F, T, I. Okay, and F, T, I can be divided and F, T, Ti, Ti minus one until Tk, right? Can be divided by this equation. <laughs> A bit complicated, right? And the Newton polynomial or Newton curve can be defined as the convex combination of this one. This one can be, is a control point. Right, where control point is like this, and this one, the projection like this will be will be the project t minus t minus t j, right? Okay, we can see for for this example, right? If if n is equal to three, right? What does it mean by project j from zero to three? The projection zero to i and t minus j, j from zero to i, right? but I from zero to N. So the first step I is equal to zero. So it has to be projection is T minus T zero. This is the first term when I is equal to zero. When I is equal to one, it will be T minus T zero multiplied by T minus T one and so on. Okay, this term. Okay, projection, project mean product, right? Project, an easy project or product. Product mean multiply. Okay, this side is multiply. Multiply. Okay, so this is a product of something, and you use sigma is the sum of product. So if I write, okay, if I write in three T, right, it will be, first of all, we have to define F zero, right? Oh, F T zero, starting with Ti is equal to zero. And then T will be T minus T zero plus F T zero T one. Am I right? 
I minus one and two K. Summation from I from zero to one. This one is I is equal to zero. This one is I equal to one. This equal to one will be a form of zero. Okay, zero T, zero one. A t zero or t one and then multiply by by what by t minus t zero multiply by t minus t one am I right and then plus f t zero t one and t two multiply by t minus t zero multiply by t minus t1 and t minus t2. Okay, this is a third, the, the, the third term. And the last term will be plus f t0, t1, t2, and t3, right? Multiply by t minus t0, t minus t1, t minus t2, and multiply by t minus t3. And then you can see that we have not yet finished, right? Because we still have this form, right? If T0, T1, what does it mean? K, K plus one, T1, T0, So we will have T F zero T will be normally I never expand this form. <coughs> I will ask my student to do so. Okay, T it will be K plus one, it will be I is zero. Mm, I is one. And Q. T one. Right? Actually, it's T one, T one. Minus F. I minus one. and divided by t. What is i, what is k? i is one, k is I think I is from the, I is greater than K. This one is supposed to be T0 or T1, T0, right? And this one is I and K. So T1 minus T0. This one will be F T1 T0. 
I minus one. Oh, I minus one. I minus one. So this one will be t zero, t zero. It will be t zero. Mm -hmm. F t, but F t t, F t one, t one is c one minus c zero divided by t one minus t zero. So this term has to be substitute, has to substitute to this term. Mm -hmm. so it's quite um, difficult and maybe you can have to use Mathematica in order to substitute this one into the formula. It would be easier. So anyway, I will say that this is, believe me, this is the Newton curve. And this one is a polynomial that is very complicated. Okay. And then, so this is uh, a simple of Newton curve, right? If you have uh, a number of ponton point like this, you can see. If you use Newton curve, right? Newton polynomial in order to interpolate this ponton point, and then you can get the curve like this. This curve is um, can pass through every control point. This is quite useful. If you have a sequence of points, like from maybe from experiment or from your data input, and then you want to try to solve the problem, you want to do the data fitting. Okay, sometimes you can call this as a data fitting, if you could remember. Okay, you can also use the Newton curve like this. Okay, I use this Newton Lacong, right? Because, because of, I have a reason. Okay, so today we will have to uh, try to write a program in order to solve this Newton curve. And then if we have Newton, and we also have Lacong, Right. Lacan is a French mathematician that I have told you, right? The way to define the Lacan is very, it's pretty similar to the Newton. I will say that, okay? You can see this one is a Lacan polynomial, right? If you have the degree n, um, degree n, right? So you will have n plus one control points on a knot, right? And then if you use the, polynomial like this, and then you can get the Lacan polynomial. And then you can, finally you can get, you, you can draw the Lacan curve as well. I, want, I would like to say that, if you come back to this, right? You can see that I, I write it Newton and Lacan, right? I would say that um, Newton polynomial are different to the Lacan polynomial, but accidentally, I don't know. They are they invent their polynomials um, from different time in different places, right? They never talk to each other, but the result of the poly their polynomial are the same. Okay, you can get so you can get the same curve like this. Like right? if you use Newton polynomial or Lacan polynomial in order to put in order to interpolate the curve according to the points, the given control points. Okay, so the next step that, uh, as I always tell you about uh, the curve in CATD, right? We want to convert the curve in CATD. You, you can see that uh, from the formula, it's very, very difficult to, to get it, right? You have to use product, right? You have to use the multiplication. You have to use, okay, this one, the division as well, right? That's very, very difficult to solve. Maybe you can um, can try to do, do this today, right? To write a program in order to solve the Newton and Lacan polynomial. So I will suggest the other form, another form that we call Newton Lacan <coughs> power basis. Okay, because they can produce the same polynomials, right? So Newton and Lacan 
basis also produce the, the same power basis. And it can be written in terms of this one, Fij. Fij can be divided by this one and this one. And this one, F, this big F, this one, when J is equal to zero, but if J is greater than two, greater than or greater than zero, right, you can use this formula. And this one is a recursive formula, if you can see that. And also you have to use the sigma as well. Very difficult, right? Okay, very really complicated, okay? And okay, I suggest you to, to see this one. This is a monomial matrix for the Newton and Lagrange, right? When you like in term of this, right, this one is quite clean, right? You can feel like this one is clean and very clear, right? And M can be defined in terms of M, like this F0, zero F0 zero one until F0 N, until F N N, right? You can find this from F, right? The formula F, formula F you can find from this one, this F, okay? And this F is still very complicated as you can see this formula, right? So can we have a um, sim simpler formula? Yes. We can, okay. In order to do this, right, we can use M, right? Actually, M is like this, right? But instead of using F, right, that is very complicated. I use T instead. T zero zero is one when I is equal to one, and it will be T T J less to the power I when I is greater than zero. Okay, and then this term, this, this formula is very simple. We can call this formula Van de Monde, Van de Monde matrix. What does it mean by Van de Monde matrix? You can use this formula in order to get the Van de Monde matrix. And then you can have to check inverse to this matrix, just that. In order to find a complicated form, before, right, by using F, small f, right, you can, you can instead use T, right, so when the Monday, I, I will call it Voldemort. <laughs> it's like Voldemort, right, and this one is when the Monday, right, matrix, right, very simple. You can just do this and then you can use inwards, take inwards into this matrix and then you can get matrix M, very simple. So this is the reason why we use monomial matrix instead of using the previous uh, elegant Newton and Lacan polynomial, right? You can see that it's very simple to me to teach you as well in CATD course. In the past, I, when I talk about Newton and Lacan, I have to, to, to talk about this form, which is very difficult and this is the, 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 the basis or the, the polynomial form for the Newton curve. And this one is for Lacan curve, right? Okay, if we use this one, this is very simple and make my life better, okay? And also, right, you can see that this Newton and Lacan polynomial matrix or the Newton Lacan interpolation curve it is very useful, right? If we want to perform the data fitting, that is very, it, that is common application in the real world application, right? We use data fitting in many applications. So, but in the CATD curve, right? Sometimes we want to model by using Bayesian curve, sidebar curve or Wang ball curve, or even for the DP curve, right? But, Sometimes we want to convert that curve into like um, data fitting, right? By using the data fitting, right? We, we can use Bayesian curve in order to model the curve. After that, for example, if you want to change the number, the, the, the control point. But after that, when we model a curve complete, completely, then we want to, 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 do the, to perform the curve fitting. Okay, so we can use Newton Lacan. So, if, so we want to, to have the relationship between Newton Lacan and CATD curve. 
So what shall we do? In order to find the relationship between Newton Lagrange curve and CATD curve, right, we have to find conversion, convert from Newton Lagrange into CATD and the convert from CATD to Newton to La Newton Lagrange, right? And in order to do that, we can use a matrix Q, right? A matrix Q will be like this, right? When matrix M is a, uh, when the model matrix like this, right? And you can just simple, like if you want to convert from Newton Lagrange into Bayesian curve, right? You can use, if you could remember, the Bayesian monomial matrix, right? Bernstein monomial matrix multiplied by this M. And then take inverse. So you can get the result. That is how if you want to convert from um, Newton Lagrange to Bayesian. But in opposite way, like if you want to convert from Bayesian to Newton Lagrange, you can use matrix, the multiplication of B and M. B and M. That's all. So you can do the same thing with the side bow, wang bow, dp, and also I have my own polynomial as well. So I can, um, my student you call the Damlong curve, and then the last one that is an nb1. This is also the CATD curve as well. So we can convert from um, Newton Lagrange curve into the CATD curve and vice versa. So that's no problem of us anymore. If we convert, if we know the monomial form, right, and also we have the proof as well. So that might be all for this um, presentation today, right? Or oh, it's just 6.30. Today I feel like um, a bit lazy. I'm not sure whether you are lazy or not. Maybe you are lazier than me, uh, lazy, feel lazy. So today I will finish this one and, okay, this one is the kinds of the interpolation curve and also we have another method that we can call, um, I forget the name. I'm going to ask my uh, PhD student Actually, I, I didn't acquire him before, right? Normally he has to come to this session, right? Right after I finish explaining about this one, the interpolation curve, right? He has to um, explain more about uh, the technique that you can join, okay? You can join the points all together and then you can come up with the Bayesian curve, right? So Bayesian curve can be, can join the points in the way that the Newton Lagrange do as well. Like this, right? If you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six contour points like this, we can use uh, I don't I don't remember the maybe I know. Maybe I know. Um, so we can use PIA, progressive iterative leap. PIA, we call this one PIA. Oops. PIA. Progressive. Iterative. I'm not sure about A. <laughs> Progressive iterative approximation. Approximation. Okay, if I have time, I will ask him to have a special session yeah, on Thursday, on one Thursday, okay, that's all.
Okay, so what I want you to do is you have to, Im I, I want you to implement three things. I think difficult, a bit difficult. Newton curve, Lagrange curve, and I think I suggest you to finish this one first. When, when the Monday matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can try to write the Mathematica program in order to solve this one. <coughs> okay, and I think that's all for today. <coughs>